Hey. How are you? Oh, well, good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Can we give a, fo a few minutes for people to join in? Awesome. <laughs> Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'm trying to wave at everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Looks like we have about six people in. I guess we could go ahead and get started. Um, well, thank you so much, Deanna, for being here with me today. I'm really excited. Like I told you yesterday on the phone, I'm excited to have this chance to actually learn from you. We've always invited you to help out with our virtual interns and tell them about sustainable living. And I haven't been able to sit through an entire one of your work. <laughs> really excited for this. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for the opportunity to reach out to more people. And well, anything that people want to know, they can just leave us the comments, um, like some comments there, and we'll find a way to answer your your questions. Um, yeah, and this is like I think um, the third or third or fourth time that I collaborate with you, so I'm happy to to be also in this platform. Yeah, thank you so much. And for those of you who may not know, um, well. We at Global Learning Programs, we do virtual internships. We also do academic programs here in Costa Rica. Um, but throughout the pandemic, we've been supporting a lot of our students virtually through internships. And as part of their experience, um, they, we have different, we invite different guest speakers to come in and just share with them different things that will be interesting to them. And so as Deanna mentioned, we've invited her at least three times now um, to share with the different groups that we've had. And I've always gotten such great feedback on it. So I'm, I'm really excited. So um, Deanna, a little bit about, you know, what you do and I don't know, give us some, some context. <laughs> Sure. So first of all, yeah. Hi, I am Diana. I live in Costa Rica and um, I have this platform that is called Vivir Sin Desperdicios. In English, that is um, to live without waste. Um, I created this website um, around um, 2016 and it started with a blog to communicate my transition from, you know, um, I don't know, a regular type of uh, consumption to um, considering most of my purchases as um, unpackaged. So how I was uh, finding ways to, to get those products in my area and other things related. So um, what I do basically is communicate and try to find ways to communicate about this topic. Um, we are in a great example here right now. And I also, um, among the different activities, I have a um how can i call it Tura Granel, a bulk buying tour in mm -hmm. my country where i invite people to visit places where we can buy our food without any packaging and also you know to expand the community yeah i need to join you for one of those as well especially because you do it in alajuela like right down the street from me so um <laughs> i <laughs> yeah yeah, so like if, they, if we have interns at some point that are in the country, they can join us. Um, I'm, I really hope that we can have that communication and, and you can also be part of the local uh, culture in bulk buying. Yeah, actually, I'm going to follow up with you on that because we do have a group of students here and that would be really cool to take them to do that. And then I can also take advantage and get some things that I need to stock up here on the house. Yes. And well, um, maybe also to provide more context, like um, the focus, as I say, is to um, learn how to find our products, mostly food. We're going to talk about food a lot. <laughs> We're going to talk about food um, in many ways in this, in this life, um, but also many other products, like how, what to do with our clothing, what to do with our um, electronic products or I don't know, any other type of experience that we want to have, a party or um, Christmas, whatever, like how to move that through the lens of um, avoiding package, uh, packaging materials, not only plastic. Um, it has to do with cardboard boxes or also paper, 
or um, and also the amount of, of fabric that we produce. Um, it could be the amount of uh, cans that we produce or whatever. So it, it has to do with everything because plastic is a, a huge <laughs> um, category and most of it does not get actually recycled or reprocessed around the world, not only in Costa Rica. Um, so trying to avoid any type of packaging helps with the plastic amount of uh, materials that we um, produce and also the others that might not be necessary at some point. Sorry, I keep having phone calls come in. And I'm <laughs> That's okay. And also, let me clarify, bulk buying means two things. One, to buy a lot of one thing, you know, like a big box of, of whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Or um, rice, you can buy it in, I don't know, in, many, in, in pounds, right? Um, if that's something that you need. But the bulk buying that we focus on is the one that you, in which you take your own container and take it to a store or somewhere and you can just buy um, a little bit of the product by weight. Mm -hmm. avoiding the packaging so that's the type of bulk buying that um, I focus on okay. so I understand that you brought some different things that you're going to show us today and um, maybe some like different ways that like how can I as a person like you mentioned try to avoid different types of packaging or what would be your main suggestions um, Perhaps if I don't have, I definitely want to talk about the bulk buying because I do know that I have, like I have a store very close by that I can go to, but I know not everyone has that opportunity. So um, what could be your, what would be your main recommendations for people who want to reduce um, their, their plastic or just reduce their, I guess, be more sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I think the first thing is to um, observe what you have. Um, it, it doesn't matter what topic you're handling. Like right now we're talking about packaging, um, but you can be talking about clothing or water consumption or whatever. So the first thing is observation. Look at what your current status is. So the exercise that uh, I practiced at the beginning was to, um, of course, um, separate everything that is organic from the garbage can um, and just keep that material from the garbage can bare until the garbage can was full. Um, that was in my bedroom, like in my mom's house when I lived there. So I didn't have to handle um, any um, food packaging, but I did handle things that were regular to me as a, um, a young worker. Um, so at the end of the period, I would just go and look again what I had and separate the types of plastics or materials that I found there. And also, and from there, analyze what I was able to eliminate right, right away or what other things I needed to find um, alternatives to or just, um, you know, observe what I have and why I have those things, right? Because at the moment when you just start... Um, you're in, in, a, in a flow, in an automatic, right? You're just riding the wave of consumption of society. You have your routine, right? You're going in high speed, but you have to stop for a second and look what you're dealing with. And that's mm -hmm. the very first thing. And this helps you um, achieve different things. First, if you want to recycle or reuse the materials that you can actually reuse or recycle, you have to have them clean and dry and separate it from the beginning, right? So this uh, first exercise of observation also helps us because if you're gonna cut the materials from your garbage can for over a week or a month there until the, the <laughs> you know, the container um, gets filled, um, you need things clean. If not, you're gonna have maybe some bugs or smells or whatever. And to reuse them, you have to have them clean and to recycle them as well. So you're achieving different things with one exercise. Nice. I like that. I have not done that before. And I think that's a really valuable, I'm kind of like semi doing that right now. I have like a box here of stuff that I know needs to be recycled. Maybe for the next week, I can just start putting everything in there, like you've said, and just keep it out of the trash can. And then once I've collected it, understand what it is that I'm still wasting, um, what I could reuse or recycle or just uh, evaluate, like, did I really need to, you know, 
consume this? Was there some better way that I could have done it? I, I really like that. That's a being able to see and touch and feel what you're wasting and process it rather than just throwing it in the trash and like not thinking twice about it. That's so intentional. And yeah, I mm -hmm. think that change. And you just uh, block that uh, flow of trash going out of your house. So the thing is like, we need to avoid trash or materials or whatever coming into your house so that you don't have to process so much stuff and so that the recycling systems or any other systems that we have for those materials then can get improved without the overload of materials that we're creating um, right now. So that's the first thing, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. And, and at this point, you see that we're not changing actually anything. You're still buying things however you like them. You're, you're just observing. And you can practice this uh, at any point, right? And the second thing after this would be to go to your regular store and find things that are not packaged or um, avoid anything that has plastics or avoid anything that you cannot reuse because you could have something plastic, but if you could at that moment re think a way, uh, of a way of, to, of reusing it, then you can give yourself that, that um, you know, permission. I don't know if you can call it like that or just like choose that product over other ones. Um, so continue to go to your same store and observe the aisles and the products differently, right? Um, some an example is the tomato sauce for your pasta for your spaghetti in costa rica we have them in glass jars we have them in um, metal cans and also in this like plastified uh, metal plastified um packaging mm -hmm. right and then you can so you can choose any uh, any you i think you also have tetra pack <laughs> yeah um Right, so you have several options. Um, the the volume is different and the price is different. The the origin of the product is different. Whatever you just have to like observe what options you have, and link that to the recycling options that you have in your community, which are different for every community. And yeah, so start like um, going to the same places that you normally go and and reduce the amount of plastics or overall packaging non-recyclable pa packaging that you can find um and of course is if it's better for you then or if it's easier for you you can buy the fresh produce of that tomato sauce and, and try to make it yourself sometimes maybe not every week but if you reduce your consumptions one once a month <laughs> you know if you buy sauce four times a, a month i don't know if you reduce it once that's a great first step yeah and mm -hmm. i will I'm gonna go ahead and do a plug here like anyone who has not made homemade tomato sauce it is so easy way better like so much better i when i see like overripe tomatoes on sale i <laughs> and buy a bunch of them because you just throw them like in a slow cooker put some sauces in there or not some sauces some seasons in there some oil and then you have like really delicious tomato sauce so i do want to say that that one's like a really i think a straightforward one that pretty much anyone can try out but um no that that's a good idea even if you can just do it once once a month or once a year is better than you know that extra bottle of tomato sauce so yeah because and, we we do get that everybody has their routine and and even though we all want to have like we do have the best intentions and want to get straight to the change and go green all the way it doesn't work like like find a bulk store and that's it <laughs> it doesn't work that way there is a transition process from your way of thinking the way you plan your purchases um we again we're focusing on food <laughs> food is huge for this um you know reduction topic um so yeah we're gonna have a lot of examples about food as i said and and little by little it's gonna get easier you know because the body also changes and you have to adjust your finances a little bit you know like sometimes you buy more of one thing or you spend less in something else so it's a process yeah yeah and i i like how you also mentioned that it's important to look at what your recycling options are locally because some of us may have an idea in our mind like oh we should always buy glass or we should always buy whatever but you may have like in you know some people of us that are hoarders that have 5,000 glass bottles 
maybe it's better for us not to use a, another glass bottle and to buy something like Tetra Brick, which is pretty easy to recycle in Costa Rica. But then in other areas, it may be kind of impossible to recycle and maybe it's better for them to, to get an aluminum can or, or whatever. So that that's really, I guess, an important thing. Do you know any specific, like, resources or ways that people can find and I know you're you know you're based in Costa Rica and maybe it's different in Canada or in the U.S. but how is it that you've found um, what is recyclable in your area that you live? Well I have um, different options and also I have to um, tell you and because we're going to talk about traveling um, I've moved I think six times in the in the past four to five years. So I have had to redo my system uh, several times. And it has never been perfect, of course. Like, uh, I'm not like, uh, I do generate materials and that's something that I'm comfortable with. Um, so don't think that I'm just like super duper zero waster because that doesn't happen like that. But I find um, the places where I can buy my things without packaging really easily. I know how to make... Um, how to decide not to buy something. For example, I can eat potatoes the whole week <laughs> so that I don't have to buy packaged rice, for example. Um, and then with the recycling centers, then in Costa Rica, we have the municipalidades, you know, mm -hmm. like um, downtown, and, and they do have recycling programs. Um, there's also this other one that it's a more um, nationwide. It's a reward system in which you deliver your materials and you get points and things like that. So on the website of this, um, um, this program, I can find more places. Um, luckily, most of the places I've lived in um, have, do have um, the collection of recycled, recycled, um, recycled materials. So I take advantage of that. Um, but the basic is like, it start avoiding anything you can in terms of plastic because, uh, that's the the highest you know um i don't know challenge that we have right now and the thing with plastics is that sometimes they say you know we have the triangles for plastics sometimes right. they say it's, it's one type of plastic but it's not or you see a um something that doesn't have any type of you know symbol any type of indication so how are you sure um, in my case, like I've gone to the recycling centers many times to ask, like, do you really <laughs> accept this or that? So that's another practice, you know, like go to your recycling center and ask, confirm, and don't just say like, oh, that's plastic, it's going to be recycled. If you buy something, you just know like, yeah, okay, I know what I'm buying. I'm not just like blind and saying that everything that it's um, plastic is recycled or whatever. So then your recommendation basically, or kind of in summary, is really just try to reduce what you're going to have to either recycle or throw away, like try to reduce the packaging as much as possible, or buy things that you know you can reuse. And then as like a last resort, when you have to recycle something, your best option is to go to your local municipality or your local recycling centers and ask them what is, what, what can you recycle in your area, right? Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, because it's <laughs> everywhere. In Costa Rica, it, we have like many options, right? So you have to adjust to what's um, available to you in your area, right? Right. I, I have a question. Um, well, there's a question that came in here. Um, it says, can you tell us which plastics, which numbers are definitely not recyclable in Costa Rica? And I guess part of that's going to depend on where they're living. But do you have like an idea in general, like which ones no one accepts yes, in Costa me. Rica? Well, I have the, the chart. I don't have it right here. I, I've never memorized that thing. Like I, I don't know it by heart. I don't like it. And when I have plastics here in my house, I actually still have to take it out and say like, okay, this is the one. Um, I normally identify them not by the number, but by their properties. So that was the way that I found um, easier for me. So I'm going to show you an example. I didn't have it here next to me, but um, I have this because I did buy something to go the other day because I didn't have anything to for breakfast. So I got this bag and mm -hmm. this utensil. Okay. So this normally is not accepted at recycling centers because it's hard, right? Um, 
But this one, this one is, you can stretch it. So that means uh -huh. that it could be easier to recycle. Um, and that happens also with the plastic bags from the supermarket. The municipality in Alajuela accepts those as well. Um, so that's a way, if this was like really, really hard and you cannot stretch it, then those, that's an indication of a plastic that it's harder to process. So those are the things that I, when I purchase, I take into consideration because as I was telling you, like this bag does not have any triangle on it, right? And even, um, I don't know, you can mark anything however you like it. So I know that this is accepted in my municipality. And for this one, there are some projects in Costa Rica that um, melt this and turn them into um, furniture you know, for oh. outdoor or other things. So you can send them th their way as well. Me, I mm -hmm. didn't know. It's weird that you say that, like, honestly, I mean, I'm someone who doesn't have like a lot of experience in, in distinguishing like which plastics are recyclable. And so for me, I probably would have gone to the reverse. Like, honestly, if I'm like at the mall and I see a recycling bin and I have my plastic fork and my plastic bin, uh, the like paper, I probably would have put the plastic fork in the bin and been like, oh yeah, this is a recyclable one. So that's kind of like that. Well, that's really like a new idea to me that, that it would be the opposite. But again, I haven't really looked into it. So that's good to know. If we are like, if, if I am in the mall and I have my plastic bag and my plastic fork and I see a plastic recycling bin, should I throw them both in there? Or am, are, is it all going to end up in the trash anyway? Like, do you have any idea in the malls and things like that, how they handle that? Well, I have really no idea. And the thing with public spaces or a system that is used by many people, and you could try it at home with two or three people, you're going to have uh, different ways of thinking, is that everything, it's sure, like, it might get mixed and you don't know how they're going to process it. And so if you're more comfortable keeping it to yourself and taking it home and being responsible for it, that would be, I think, the, something that it would give me more peace of mind personally than just yeah. putting it there. Because um, it's a good, everybody's trying their best, but mm -hmm. when we are doing things in mass, and things get more difficult, okay? Yeah. But then um, rather than focusing on recycling, um, I was, as I was saying, the focus of Vivir Sin Desperdicios initially is to um, uh, do the, everything unpackaged or the, as much as possible. And um, for this, be it at home to buy, buy your, your food or if you're going to a restaurant or to travel, you have to be prepared. And then that's the next step, you know, after observing and after going to your regular supermarket and then trying to find bulk stores or bulk uh, possibilities in your area, you need to be prepared. Why? Because you're, maybe you're going to need more cloth bags. Mm -hmm. I have mine here uh, next to the door, so you might have more of this. And these need to get washed as well because um, sometimes they you know, get dirty and they have to get washed and you have to have enough. Um, if you're buying bulk, you should, um, you know, prepare your jars okay. um, some days beforehand so that it, all the humidity goes away um, from, the, from this. Like never, never store a jar that you just washed, even though you dry them it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Because they should go always with the lid off so that the humidity can go away. Um, I have one there that I just saw today that um, they also get, you know, like the water droplets. So right. if you have that, even, like, it's not going to be clean and ready to get your, your food in here. So you need to, pre to prepare to see what you have in, in your house, what you need. Um, prepare your jars, prepare your um, cloth bags. You may also have smaller cloth bags to carry some things to avoid bringing containers. But then at home, you have to, you know, transfer them to the final container. Um, so these things do are important <laughs> if you want to reduce and avoid materials. And also when you travel um, or when you're going to a restaurant, you can have a fork with you that you 
have from home, um, maybe just like a container as well. I'm a person that when I go to restaurants, it's most likely that I'm not going to eat the whole thing. You know, mm -hmm. the, the portions are too big for me. So I know that I might rather just uh, pick something small from the menu, like hopefully the children's menu, <laughs> if that's possible. Or if not, I, I, I need to carry this. So yeah. um, that's preparation as well to get the, you know, the rest home back home. Mm -hmm. I've never thought to bring to go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. I never, like, well, I went it depends. Some half of the time I finish my meal and the other half I usually get it to go. I'm going to just have to keep a, a container in my car for that kind of purpose. I've never thought of that. I don't know why. I mean, of course, I have my like reasonable fork that I can take with me and whatnot, but container never crossed my mind. That's a really good <laughs> one that I add to my list. Yeah, that, that, that's an, an important one for me. Or if not, just try to eat the whole thing, you know, to avoid <laughs> food waste. <laughs> so yeah. be mindful of that. In, like, um, in other countries that I travel to, the, the portions are enormous. Like, I, I, I cannot eat that. So, um, yeah, I try to find something smaller from the menu. Or, I don't know, maybe share with someone, someone else if possible. <laughs> I do a lot of sharing, but usually because I really want to try like several different things, but it is a really great strategy as well for reducing the waste. Mm -hmm. What other things can you prepare to like be around? You have to have your water bottle, you know, or any type of, you know, thing to carry your, your liquids, mm -hmm. um, the blacks, um, the tea, maybe a handkerchief. I love cloth napkins. I love them. They are mm -hmm. the best tool ever <laughs> they're useful to clean yourself or to make a, um, a bag in the moment or to carry food as well I have purchased many many items of food you know like uh, in a napkin in a cloth napkin um they're awesome i love them <laughs> like yeah. a handkerchief, right like uh a... yeah i can show you is that i live in a tiny home so i have everything nearby <laughs> i'm in my kitchen <laughs> Yeah, so That's I have everything we'll have near me. Tour of your tiny home. I'm sorry? <laughs> we'll have another live where you give us a tour of your tiny home. I didn't know you lived in a tiny home. Yeah, it's like a, in meters, it's like six by six. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, it really sounds And that includes the kitchen and the bathroom and the bed and the office. And <laughs> Wow, oh my gosh. Yeah, so the, the, the napkin, the cloth napkin, you see, it's just like a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a handkerchief. Yeah. Or just, I have smaller ones, but this is great. I have bought bread with this, you know, or chocolate as well, bananas, uh, lettuce, uh, dog treats, uh, sandwiches. <laughs> so right, uh, like I've, I've been to Subway, and instead of getting the packaging for the <laughs> for the for the sandwich, I got my sandwich. Wow. They will do that. I mean, I know that it depends a lot probably on where you are and stuff, but that's nice to know that in some restaurants you can actually be like, hey, wrap it in this instead and they'll do it. Yeah, and also like to go, you can you can bring your containers to many places and they'll put it there. Or you can ask how, the different ways of doing it. For example, okay, again, traveling. Um, last weekend I went to Guanacaste, another province here in Costa Rica. And on the way back, you know, we're driving on the highway and we need to go to the toilet. So we made a stop and there I wanted to have some French fries to go <laughs> because it was going to be a long way back. Uh, and I noticed that they had this, um, how, how can I say, like plastic bubble, right, to get your fries. But they okay. said it was made, uh, compostable. And that's uh -huh. another topic. <laughs> like, and I don't like that either because... It, if they look too pack, uh, plasticky in my the, yeah. uh, dictionary, they are not easily compostable, right? They are not going to compost in my backyard. So um, it might need a facility with certain conditions to compost. Um, so I also try to avoid those type of uh, packaging as well. Um, so I, I was able, I observed the restaurant and see what they had at hand because I did not have a container with me at the moment. Um, and I found they had uh, paper bags, the brown paper bag. 
So mm-hmm. I they I got my French fries in the brown paper bag, and um, for the sauces they just got the sauces from the kitchen and gave me some ketchup and whatever, and I had my to go fries with a paper bag instead of the compostable plastic food bubble, right? So even that. Mm-hmm. Wow. So and that that's so serving. Yeah, like looking around, how do they serve the food? What am I going to get? Even if I sit there or if I go, like what's going on? <laughs> mm-hmm. So regarding the compostable plastic, because that, yeah, that's definitely like blown up a lot, especially here in Costa Rica. Um, pretty much like, well, a, a lot of San Jose has gotten rid of straws. And so you see now that pretty much all the straws say that they're compostable. And I've had my doubts about that because some of them do, like you said, they feel a lot like plastic. And I'm like, how is this being composted? Like how long does, what, what is the, like, what are the regula- regulations? If there are any, if you know about it, like in terms of marking something compostable, or is it kind of like the numbers and it really is just mm-hmm. arbitrary? Well, with um, plant-based plastics or materials, um, like plastic, like the, 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 it's not a type of material, but it, the form, the material is being presented. So bioplastics or plant-based plastics, um, plastic, what it means is that the carbon chains are more rigid so, or harder to break. So that's the plasticity of a material. So it doesn't matter if it's based uh, from fossil fuel, fuels or a plant-based plastic. Okay. So that's like the the first thing that we should know. Um, so the thing is that with plant-based plastics or things that they say they are compostable, most of them are not backyard compostable or... I cannot compose them in my compost bin for the kitchen scraps. Mm -hmm. Um, They might need a facility that it's uh, maybe, uh, there's a way that it's called like um, sea salt composting, I think. And you need certain humidity, certain heat, like um, relationship between the humidity and the um, carbon ratio. Mm -hmm. And many things may last longer than 90 days, which is the the standard um, test that they use for for composting to say that something is compostable um so yeah it's, it it has to do like with more things than just um the origin of the material um most cities do not have uh composting facilities so right. for the, and many of these materials go to the garbage can as i any like i don't know and um, half eaten apple goes right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah. we should necessarily <laughs> this to like that. I mean, basically, the main thing that you have to do is just try to reduce, 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 rather than relying on substituted things that may not live up to the promises that they're that are being portrayed, like with compostable. Or just like try to find out what I'm, I'm sorry, said I I I can't I'm here. Um, just try to find out what applies to your area. That's the okay. most important thing as well. Like I cannot tell you never to buy something in a specific because the world is already too packaged, and we are all trying to find the best way of reducing um, many types of materials. So try to do the best with what you have at the moment. Right there, there's not only one option for everybody everywhere. So yeah, but do think about it. Be prepared and do the best that that you can with whatever you have. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do do you have any other questions for the moment, or should I move with something else? I have one more kind of in the stream, and then I'll let you go on. So you mentioned that like when you were in Guanacaste, you were observing the restaurant and trying to figure out. I asked for instead of the, the compostable compostable plastic so my question is if if we're wanting to observe and pick like the lesser of all the evils do you have kind of like a ranking system like <laughs> plastic what about aluminum um you know like do you kind of have like an internal ranking system you can share with us <laughs> like a personal rating yeah so i i i i rather use paper like if i have to i rather use paper okay. or you know like, um more cardboard the kind of bubbles there are some bubbles that, that um 
are not plastic. They're just like a harder paper and they do not shine. If they shine, they have a plastic layer, <laughs> just like sugar envelopes. <laughs> if they have uh, something shiny, it might, it might be plastic. Um, so I avoid those, but, So I'd rather use the paper ones because I can put them in my backyard. You know, I use them to kill um, the grass. If I want to plant something, I just uh, cover the, the grass with something, with ca cardboard or whatever, and it kills the grass, and I can just go straight to the earth after a, a week or two. And then the material is composted, or I have my compost bin for those things. Um, Because if we're handling with food, normally it's not recyclable if it already has grease or uh, or something in it. Um, then, yeah, aluminum does not get recycled, and it's really hard to wash <laughs> to put put to put it in the I don't know whatever place you want to put it to reuse it. Um, so I try to avoid avoid that as well. Um, plastics, I only I mostly take the ones that I know how to reprocess somehow um or just accept i just accept that this is the way it is and i'm gonna get this and that's that's that because sometimes you know like i'm i'm the other way i was on my, on the catarata de la paz and there is this guy in a, in a waterfall in here in costa rica near the volcano really nice um you know it i'm sure and um, there's this guy selling sweets And he's from Guanacaste, like he's from another province, and he's there with his, you know, stand selling stuff. So I also need to buy local, <laughs> right? So I need to, like, support this person who's working and trying to offer his products. So at some point, I just decide to go ahead and buy the thing, right? right. Um, at, some, at some moments, because, like... He needs my support. I want what he's say, selling. Uh, it's a great experience. Like sometimes I do buy it, right? I, I just know that I'm what I'm doing. I'm not buying just because. Um, that's the difference. Yeah. That But if he had it unpackaged, I would love to have it unpackaged. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that, that all makes sense. All right. So what other tips do you have or other items you have to share with us? Sure. Um, well, maybe um, I'm going to go with the traveling as well. Um, mm -hmm. Try to buy local. You can go to a food chain uh, or you can buy local. And even if you, ha if you have to choose between packaged and packaged, you know, packaged local and packaged food chain, <laughs> go with the packaged local. Try, try to eat in the restaurants um, that, yeah. you know, like, that look very uh, made from, from local people. Um, handled by them, I don't know, try new things, um, try to eat more local food, uh, fruits, maybe instead of buying packaged um, snacks, mm -hmm. things like that. That's really, really good for you and for wherever you are. You're going to try new new things as well. And yeah, that's uh, something that just came to my mind regarding that. Um, from the other topics I, I have here in my hand, maybe also on the moving Um, going on the being on the go constantly makes you look at your possessions as well because we're we have been talking about package stuff but the thing has to do with almost everything in our lives and our possessions um, are a huge part of it like how much things do we actually get constantly and how much right. things do we actually carry with us uh, throughout the years So the less possessions you have, the less uh, you have to carry, you know, try to travel light. Even And this applies even if you're not traveling, like try to have the least things that in your house, right? Um, try to find more uh, items that are multi-purpose so that you can have less possessions. Um, yeah, and that's really, really important as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have kind of a personal antidote there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm from the States. I live in Costa Rica now. And I will say that here in Costa Rica, I reduced because, you know, I came here with only a couple bags. And um, I have bought things over the years. But I've also, I'm like you, that I've moved several times in the past few years. So now I'm, I'm at a pretty good place. But um, a few months ago, I went home and we were cleaning out my childhood home. Oof. <laughs> uh, 
literally <laughs> imagine like we had so much stuff there and we had to rent a dumpster and just throw out things that had been there for 20 something years and no one had touched it and so things that were kind of gross and like didn't work or were broken or whatever so a lot of it you know it needed to go but now every time that I go to buy something when I touch it and I'm tempted to buy it I ask myself how long will it take before I throw this in a dumpster? And if the answer, like, if I can envision myself throwing it in the dumpster, I just put it right back down and I'm like, I don't need it. You know, there's, there's so many things that I want, but if it's like, if I'm going to throw it away, it's a waste of my money. And then it's just, you know, it's, it's not good for the, for the planet. I mean, it's not, I don't need it. So anyone who's gone through a similar experience, you can try that technique or if you <laughs> you if you're looking around and like yeah I could probably use a dumpster just start asking touch it like is this going to end up in a dumpster or am I going to be tempted to throw this away because then it's it's probably not worth it yeah and that applies to everything and and that makes you think of like how can we improve the the lifespan or of some products right um you might have found toys in your um you know exercise back home um, for downsizing or cleaning the house, that that toy could have been used by some kid for the last 15 years, <laughs> right? And, and maybe, okay, things do have your sentimental meaning, yeah. whatever, but if it's not the case, some things can be used by someone else. Everything mm -hmm. can be used by someone else kitchen appliances or I don't know spoons there's people that have 20 spoons for for cooking and do you really need that much so like how can we <laughs> if you use them or whatever you enjoy them like there are things that just bring you joy and I'm not I'm not gonna fight with that um it's just like be mindful of what you have make the most of what you have um extend the life of the things that you do own and be mindful of what you're purchasing as well you can buy something that might be for a temporary project and that's okay, but then have a plan of how to pass that to another person. Are you going to resell it? Are you going to donate it or give it as a gift, right? So you don't have to limit yourself sometimes, of course, because you think, okay, I'm not going to use it forever. I'm going to throw it in the dumpster. Well, okay, let's, let's remove the dumpster. Like, you do purchase what you want, but remove the dumpster from the equation and try to find what to do with the thing afterwards, right? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I could be like, I really want this plate just for one season, and then I'll give it to someone else. That's, that's actually a great idea. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, it could work. And uh, again, we don't have a good, like, a 100% um, perfect answer for everybody, but that's okay. And I'm going to give you an example right now that we're going to have Christmas uh, coming our way. Um, gift giving, right? To start trying to think of how, what are you going to give. Mm -hmm. um, one recommendation and try to practice this passing along, you know, moving like um, things. Um, I received these two bracelets uh, recently in a gift giving exercise. And the thing was like, bring something that you already own that you have not used for the past year. And and then at the moment, like everybody did that and we just um, like chose our gift randomly and I got these two bracelets and I think they're awesome. <laughs> I'm really enjoying them and I hope the person who gave them away feels lighter uh, because they are now living with someone else, right? right. That's a really great idea. Oh my gosh. Okay. If my sister's still on here, take that to heart. I can go through your room and pick out some. Um, oh, <laughs> another thing that we're trying to do in our family, because I've been kind of rejecting gifts for a while since for me, it's so hard to back to Costa Rica and I just move and I'm going to, you know, like probably get rid of it. So um, when I was talking with my sisters a few days ago, and I was like, why don't we just try to give experiences this year? Like rather than, than giving gifts of, you know, things like let's, let's, doing, let's do something together instead, like make memories together. So um, yeah. I do of, like re-gifting something that you already have. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. And um, yeah. That's awesome. I can go then to the party part because um, that's a, 
a place like when we gather with other people uh we do tend to create more trash uh, more yeah. materials um and i do understand why you know organizing parties for many people is it for many people is not easy um uh, but if you like to do something this year try to find a quick win something that you can do easily um it might be washing the dishes instead of purchasing plastic uh, disposable dishes or it might be preparing you know dessert uh instead of buying you know a packaged dessert from the supermarket and of course try for everything that we have talked about you need uh, the support of uh, your, your community so little by little we need to develop uh, communication skills to let people know our intentions uh without being judgmental without um like you know pointing fingers to anybody um and trying to get people on our side and collaborating if they want to right um because this is a point sometimes we we don't think about it but we do need to communicate what we want if we want to buy something in bulk we need to communicate it to the person in the store if we want to get presents you need to let your family know and i did that as well a couple of years ago and i need to be friendly it's like family i have everything i need thank you for the for the um you know this privilege um if you want to invest in me <laughs> donate it or um buy something for yourself or whatever right so this in this type of conversations even if it seems easy it's not and it, it's not you get a lot of confrontation from everybody from people that are close to you and from strangers so yeah. that's something that you should know <laughs> you're going to get confrontation and you're going to get bullying <laughs> right you're, like, you're going to get bullied and um you need to know that that happens and that's why communication and it's it's a key factor as well yeah definitely <laughs> it's not an easy conversation but i will say it's it gets easier the second time that you have it you know the first time everyone's like what you this and it's like no I'm just i just don't want gifts and then but then the next year it's kind of like everyone expects you know like okay no gifts for you right and it's like yeah thanks you know it 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 is just that initial kind of like what is this unknown but then um i think yeah people are people tend to be understanding it's just when when there's an unknown our our gut reaction is kind of like oh what is this so mm -hmm. yeah um, and that's something that we normally don't talk about in uh, sustainability you know mm -hmm. um we're focused on the materials or on other on other things but communication it's uh it's key and that you're sure of what you're doing and because i really you do get bullied <laughs> a lot <laughs> at least i did and if you don't know that that's going to happen some people might be sensitive to to that reaction of people and that uh, prevents them from going moving forward with their sustainability practices and that should not be the case if you need to talk to someone like well i'm here for you as well um but do know that that's going to happen and just be friendly and non just non judgmental if you can definitely we had another question in the chat um someone asked what else can be done to preserve the planet besides recycling and reducing um like what creates the most impact from a one person <laughs> and they asked about planting trees cleaning beaches rivers etc do you have any recommendations there like beyond living without waste which is your main message do you have like another message that you would recommend or promote well do the best you can wherever you are uh, actually like yesterday we were talking about the medical industry <laughs> you and you and i and mm -hmm. what options people had there and like i do not mess with medical industry or someone's health i do not you know try to give you an option from for a pill because i do not have it i do not mess with that and if you're a healthcare provider i understand that you're going to create a lot of materials because you need them right but what other things then can you do right in that environment because you you say like i work every day with this amount of plastics and materials like i feel overloaded overwhelmed what can i do well I don't know to to your peers is lunch time something that you can change maybe the way that food is served I don't know or you can promote a different type of celebration like we were talking um just now or you can promote volunteering 
-hmm. or you can plant trees that's the thing well yeah there's like a conclusion that planting trees is one of like the best things you can do in your life to promote like um, a sustainable lifestyle and uh, health for, for the planet because they take a long time to grow to their fullest potential and um yeah so that's something that we can do but It all depends on you and wherever you are at the moment. I'm not going to tell you to stop using an airplane because I know that's not something that it's going to happen. I do want to travel again as well. Um, yeah, so it depends on you mainly. So just do the best you can. Everything counts. Everything counts and it's going to look differently every single day. Even if you are the best like environmentalist in the world you're gonna have different levels of impact in the world right one thing is to buy something packaged and the other thing is to use a car to go somewhere and even even if you use public transportation that has an impact as well our phones have an impact as well um Electronic coins <laughs> have an impact as well on the planet, uh, our shoes, our jewelry, our everything. So um, we cannot go as that far as to count everything because right. um, we're going to go crazy, but do the best you can. And if you have, can choose, then plant a tree. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think one other thing that I would add, um, and probably that a lot of us don't think about, It's just policies in general, like, you know, writing to your legislator, writing to your politicians, um, voting in policies that have to do with environmental measures. I think so many things like kind of sneak by in parliament and in things just because we're not really paying attention to mm -hmm. them. Um, so check out just like what's your local government, what regulations are they passing or considering or just send an email or call up your local legislator and ask them like, hey, what are you doing for the environment? Or like, what kind of um, policies are being pushed through right now? And just little things like that. Um, I've also seen a fair amount of people like pointing out different companies and how they're like utilizing like too much plastic in their packaging or whatever. And just writing them an email like on social media, it doesn't have to be like a whole blast where you, you know, tweet mm -hmm. them like at them and, and, and blast them, right? You can just send them a, a private message and say, hey, you know, I noticed this, like, have y'all considered this? Or send an email to their, um, to whomever in their department of plastic, I don't know, management. So yeah, just, just pointing out when you see things, just noticing what's going on with policies and things like that, I think is another thing on an individual level that you can do. Yes, that's very important, actually. Um, we do have the power of changing things and if that's uh, the way you want to get involved um, it's very important that you do it be it in your restaurant in your local restaurant in your local store or to your uh, candidates um, you know you can do it as well so in that way you are going to be more little by little you'll find more confidence to continue to promote the lifestyle that you want as well at the end mm -hmm. of the day right mm-hmm And I don't know how much time we have left. I, 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 we can talk about so many things. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know if there are more questions or if we just move forward with another topic or how you want to go ahead. Um, I guess if anyone has any wrap-up questions that they want to drop in, go ahead and do that now. But um, I don't know, Deanna, if there like, you know, any other like really important things that you want to share with us or show us before that you leave, I think we can go ahead and like start winding down. But just to give people a chance to ask any last questions you have, kind of one last message that you'd like to share? Yes, um, maybe two things. The first one is that if you are in Costa Rica in November, and if you are near Alajuela, we're going to have our bulk buying tour this um, Saturday, November 20th at 10 a.m. in Alajuela in a store that it's called Villa Natura. If you like, you can go to my profile here in, in, on Instagram and um, take a look at the details. You don't, And if you can participate, I'm happy to, to have you there. Just uh, write me a message. Um, send me a message, yes. And the other thing is that with everything that we have been talking about, We, we are focusing on materials and the environment and being eco-friendly and how to recycle, but 
everything that is physically with us it's part of our internal being right so everything that's in the garbage can comes from my habits and my decisions and my needs or just um you know it's a reflection of my day to day and to, of my life so if you want to go on that philosophical level <laughs> the experience of turning to a more eco-friendly type of consumption it just takes a whole different level yeah it takes a, a different tone so if you look that you have too much of something you mm -hmm. might ask yourself um, why is it just because I, I choose to go to this supermarket or is there anything um, deeper coming <laughs> like behind the decision, right? So that's um, very healing as well because waste is not only physical, it can be waste of everything <laughs> that you can imagine. So your energy and your resources and your emotions um, are a part of that as well. Uh, yeah. You didn't know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my God. You never expect that, uh, and I really like it. I didn't know that either when I started this, but but if you take a look at at, at things from that point of view, it it gets uh, to be really powerful. Yeah. Oh wow! I really appreciate you sharing that that insight with us. This is really gonna make me like sit here and reflect for a couple hours. <laughs> we get oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm pretty November twentieth. I can join you at ten a.m. So I'm just gonna confirm. But um, I'm planning on going to POAS after that. So I really have no excuse. Like, I'll already be in that area. So I definitely, um, well, hopefully I can join. And then definitely if I do, I will, you know, share about it in our Instagram. And I do encourage everyone, even if you're not in Costa Rica, go and follow Diana's page. She posts a lot of stuff um, and a lot of different resources and tips and things like that. Um, so definitely a resource that I recommend checking out and, and following. And yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity to learn with you and to share with you and um, have you share with us so many great tips and things like that. Um, I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time so much. And thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for everybody that was present as well. Yeah, thank you all for tuning in. And hopefully that you've learn at least one tip or got something out of this, whether it's just a message and just start to internalize even just yeah, that. And it, like, I, I think like uh, if anybody like wants to share anything, like we're open, like afterwards, you know, like the, 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 the communication line is open even after the live. So anything that you'd want to ask, we're here. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. See you in a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Thank you.